All right, scholars, I'd like to do an example for you. This is number five on the force problems worksheet. You have a diagram here of an object. You have an applied force. You have the um, force of friction resisting the motion of it. And a little table underneath. I want to show you how this table works. We have applied force on the object and friction force on the object. The net force on the object would be uh, the difference between the two because applied force is to the right, friction force is to the left. To find the net force, we subtract. And um, you also have the mass of the object and the acceleration of the object. We're going to use Newton's second law that says the net force, F net, equals mass times acceleration. So here we see the mass is 1.5 kilograms. In order to find the acceleration, we would have to know the net force on the object. But that's easy to figure out. We can do applied force of 18 newtons minus 12 newtons of friction force equals 6 newtons of net force to the right because the applied force is to the right and it's stronger than the friction force. So now we can, uh, we can now use this equation. We can do a little algebraic rearrangement here. We can divide both sides by acceleration. I'm sorry, divide both sides by mass mass will cancel out on the right and so what we have is another form for this equation where acceleration equals net force divided by mass so just fill to finish in this table the acceleration is going to be 6 newtons divided by 1.5 kilograms Ah, there we go. And 6 divided by 1.5 is 3.0 meters per second square. Okay, um, so these all use the same equation. And um, let me do one example like this one here. 75 kilograms of mass. If the object is accelerating at a rate of 1.5 meters per second square, then what is the net force acting on it and how much is the applied force? Well, again, we can see that net force equals mass times acceleration. So we can do 75 times 1.5 and that is, let's see, half of 75 is 37.5. Um, 37, 37 plus 0.5 is 112.5 newtons. So if we're going to end up with this much net force, then this is the difference between the applied force and the friction force. If the friction force is 80, then we have to have some number here for applied force that will give us 112.5 after we subtract the friction force. So this here is going to be equal to 80 newtons plus 112.5, which will give us 190 2.5 newtons. So let's just check our work here. Applied force of 192.5 minus 80 gives us a net force of 112.5 newtons, which will cause a 75 kilogram object to accelerate at a rate of 1.5 meters per second square. Okay. Um, if, you look on the, if you look on the back side, you're going to see a different type of table. Let me explain how this works. Description of motion. If the object is at rest and you are applying a force of 50 newtons to it, then how much static friction must there be? We know we're dealing with static friction because it is at rest. And because it's at rest, the forces on it are balanced. Applied force of 50 newtons must be balanced with a friction force of 50 newtons. Um, let's see here. The next example, constant velocity. 
So we know it's moving, but it's not accelerating. So here we can say, again, the net force acting on it is zero. So how much applied force would balance out 150 newtons of kinetic friction force? And um, I'll let you decide what you think is the best answer for that. And we'll check them tomorrow in class. Good luck.